This video is going to discuss line and rotational symmetry. Let's start with line symmetry. A figure has line symmetry if it maps onto itself after a line reflection. A line of symmetry divides a figure into two equal parts. And we're going to take a look at these capital letters here and circle the letters that have line symmetry. So the capital letter A does have line symmetry because I could draw a line that when I draw this and think of it as a line of reflection, the pre-image would map onto itself. Okay, So if I take, for instance, this point here, reflect it over that line, it's going to land here, and we're going right back on top of the letter. Okay, So A has line symmetry. I'm going to circle some other examples that have line symmetry. And if we take a look, a look at the ones I did not circle, P, S, and G, those do not have the ability to have a line drawn on them that would split the figure or the letter in half and cause it to map onto itself. Now let's move on to rotational symmetry. A figure has a rotational symmetry if it maps onto itself after a rotation about its center. The degree measure for rotational symmetry should be less than 360 degrees. Circle the letters that have rotational symmetry. The way that I think about this question and rotational symmetry is can I turn the shape and have it look like the original figure without just turning my paper 360 degrees back where I started from? So for instance, the letter O has rotational symmetry. If I rotate the letter O 180 degrees, basically upside down, it still looks like the letter O, okay? Whereas if I take the letter A and rotate it 180 degrees, it's gonna look like this. It does not look like the letter A anymore, okay? I'm gonna circle some other letters here that also have rotational symmetry. So the letters O, H, X, I, S, all of those have rotational symmetry because if I rotate them 180 degrees in this case for each of those letters, then I'm going to look at the original figure. It's going to look like the same shape. All right, let's take a look at how this relates to polygons though. So for line symmetry, the number of lines of reflection that would map a regular polygon onto itself is equal to the number of sides. A regular polygon is a polygon with all equal sides and angles. So it says, therefore a square has blank lines of reflection that would map it onto itself. While a square has four sides, a square is a regular polygon. So there are four lines of reflection that would map it onto itself. You could think about that as how many lines of symmetry does the square have? So if I take the square here and I draw in, I can definitely draw a vertical and horizontal line of symmetry. Okay, and again, the lines of symmetry are really like lines that map onto itself. And I can also draw diagonal lines of symmetry. Lines of symmetry are equivalent in this case to the lines of reflection that would map the square onto itself. Now let's look at rotational symmetry for a regular polygon. The minimum number of degrees needed to rotate a regular polygon onto itself is 360 divided by the number of sides or any multiple of that value. So therefore, three degrees of rotation about the center that would map a square onto itself are. Well, a square has four sides. So if I do 360 divided by four, I get 90 degrees. And any multiple of that value would work as well. So 180 and 270. If I take a square, rotate it 90 degrees, 180 degrees, or 270 degrees about its center, it will map onto itself. Let's look at some sample questions utilizing these ideas. 
Number one, for each shape, determine how many lines of reflection could be drawn to map the shape onto itself. So we do not necessarily need to draw and look at the picture for each of these because we know a little bit of a shortcut that if it's a regular polygon, the number of lines of reflection that would map the shape onto itself is equal to the number of sides. So when I look at this list from A through F, the first four shapes are all regular polygons, regular pentagon, all equal sides, equilateral triangle, square, and regular octagon. So therefore, for A through D, the number of sides is equal to the number of lines of reflection that would map the shape onto itself. If it's not a regular polygon, for instance, E trapezoid F rectangle, then we have to think about it. We have to not use a shortcut. We could draw a picture or think about it in our head. And we have to see, can we draw any lines of symmetry? Because remember, the lines of symmetry are basically equivalent to saying the lines of reflection that would map the shape onto itself. So trapezoids can be drawn many different ways. So if I just draw a trapezoid here, and I look at that, I actually cannot draw any lines of symmetry for that trapezoid. There's no way for me to split it in half into two equal parts. So a trapezoid does not necessarily have any lines of reflection that would map the shape onto itself. If it is an isosceles trapezoid, which we'll look at one in a little bit, that changes things. But this just says trapezoid. For a rectangle, if I draw a rectangle here, a rectangle has two lines of symmetry. It has a horizontal line and a vertical line. Sometimes people think a rectangle also has four lines of symmetry and that you could use the diagonals. And the way that I would challenge that is take a piece of computer paper, loose leaf paper, and try and fold it in half diagonally. You'll see the corners do not line up or in the whole, all the edges do not line up. Therefore, that's not a line of symmetry. Whereas if you take that same piece of paper and you try and fold it in half horizontally or vertically, everything will line up perfectly and those are in fact lines of symmetry. All right, for number two, we're gonna look at those same shapes and we're going to now figure out the number of degrees to rotate the shape, the minimum number of degrees, about its center so that it maps onto itself. So that rule for a regular polygon Okay, so we could even like divide this and can do the same thing on number one. A through D are regular polygons. The rule is 360 divided by the number of sides. So for A, I get 72 degrees. For B, triangle has three sides. So 120 degrees. A square, we even saw this example on the first page. We get 90 degrees. And for an octagon, that's an eight-sided polygon, we get 45 degrees. For E, our trapezoid, this is where, again, we have to think about it. How can I rotate a trapezoid so that it looks exactly the same? If I take a trapezoid, and I'll draw one again here, and I rotate this, let's say, 180 degrees, it doesn't look like the same exact trapezoid. The only way for me to get it to look the same would be to rotate it 360 degrees, which is basically the equivalent of rotating at zero degrees, doing nothing. So that's why we say a trapezoid does not have rotational symmetry. However, a rectangle... If I rotate this rectangle 180 degrees upside down, it'll look the same. If I rotate it at 90 degrees, by the way, it would be the other way around. So if I rotate it 180 degrees, I do have the rectangle mapping onto itself and it looks the same. Okay. One way that you could think about this is, again, thinking about the lines of reflection. The rectangle had two lines of reflection that would map it onto itself and do 360 divided by two. All right, let's take a look at some other examples. So I mentioned before that an isosceles trapezoid changes things. 
So an isosceles trapezoid has two equal legs. The non-parallel sides are going to be equal or congruent. And when that happens, you'll see that you can actually draw a line of symmetry. So since the legs are congruent, I am able to draw in this line of symmetry. And here's how we could check that. If I take T and reflect it over that line, it's going to land on top of R. If I take R, reflect over that line, it lands on top of T. And I could do the same thing on the bottom with P and A. And since it's landing back onto pre-existing points, that's why we call it mapping onto itself. So in this problem, we're asked to come up with the line that would map it onto itself. That's a vertical line at negative two. So the line of reflection that would map TRAP onto itself is x equals negative 2. In number 4, it says a reflection over what line or lines would map square math onto itself. Well, we said before that a square has four lines of symmetry or four lines of reflection that would map it onto itself. So two of them we can come up with pretty quickly. That's the y-axis. And that has the equation x equals 0. We could call it that too. And the x-axis, which has the equation y equals 0. But a square, you can actually split it in half diagonally. So if I draw a line going from m to t, and I could do one that goes through a and h as well, those are also lines of symmetry for this shape, therefore lines of reflection that map it onto itself. Okay. If you have trouble seeing that, let's look at one at a time here. If I take a look at this line, if I take H and reflect it over this line, it's going to land on A. If I take A, reflect it over that line, it's going to land on H. So let's put those lines back in and let's come up with their equations. One of them has a positive slope of 1 and goes through the origin, so y equals x. The other has a negative slope, so a slope of negative 1 and goes through the origin, so y equals negative x. Okay, so all four of these lines would map square math onto itself. All right, for number five, a regular hexagon is rotated about its center. Which of the following rotations would map the regular hexagon onto itself? So we're talking about rotations. So the rule for regular polygons, which we have here, is 360 divided by the number of sides. And when I do that, I get 60. Now, 60 just happens to not be an answer choice here. It doesn't mean it's incorrect. It just means that we have to consider the multiples of 60. So remember, that formula, 360 divided by the number of sides, gives you the minimum number of degrees, but any multiple of that will also work. So if I do some multiples of 60, 120, 180, 240, and we finally got one that is an answer choice here, so that would be D, 240 degrees. All right, for our last problem, it says which regular polygon has a minimum rotation of 36 degrees about its center that carries the polygon onto itself? So we can do this a couple of different ways. We could try working with our answer choices and do 360 divide by 5, 360 divide by 6, 360 divide by 10, 360 divide by 12, and see which one gives us 36. In this case, that's going to be C. So the answer to this problem is a decagon. The other way that you could do this is reverse it, take 360, and instead of dividing by the number of sides, divide by that minimum rotation. So divide by 36, and I get 10. That means I need a 10-sided polygon, and that gives us choice C, a decagon. Hopefully this video helped you understand line and rotational symmetry.